Hey, how are you? I'm Chris Robin, a.k.a. at Detroit Beastie, here with Team Rise or Fall to talk NFL Week 1. And, well, Chris, what about NFL Week 1? Let's get into some fantasy-stuffed games. Stick around, and when I'm back, we're getting into it. I'm telling you. See you in a minute. Hey, and we're back. Again, I'm Chris Robin, a.k.a. at Detroit Beastie, here with Team Riser Fall. Just a few moments out of your weekend, or the end of your week here, I want to talk about the fantasy-stuffed games, how I see them in the week one of the NFL season. Before we get to that, make sure you go to Team Riser Fall, like, share, subscribe, all that jazz, and, and as you can see, use promo code NFL50. That'll get you 50% off your first month of premium services. I believe it's 29 99 for the whole spiel there and so with 50 percent off you'll get that for just about 15 bucks and i'm telling you once you're in you'll be sticking around for the long haul all the the, the ownership percentages all the discord chats i mean it's unbelievable so make sure you go to team riser fall like share leave a comment one thing i i need from you if you're watching this leave a comment what's the ruling on like a polo shirt having it buttoned all the way up i don't know i like to do this all the way up it seems more more classy and for a video it's just kind of in and out so i need a ruling from you so let me know in the comments buttoned all the way up or, or whatever i don't know so let's just get right into it week one starts on Thursday night as we know Tampa Bay hosts the Dallas Cowboys and, and that's that's surely going to be a fantasy stuffed game but I want to really hone in and focus on on week one on Sunday and and we have there's 16 games it's going to be maxed out I know myself included a lot of folks are going to be glued to their TV all night and day it starts off obviously Thursday as I said and then we just get right into it Philly at Atlanta Pittsburgh at Buffalo and the list goes on we would be here all day if I went through every game from a from a DFS perspective or from a betting perspective but for the sake of the video here I just want to pick out some gems three or four games that I think are going to be loaded and stuffed with fantasy points not only from a seasonal perspective but more importantly from a DFS and a betting perspective over unders point spreads the whole works so hang here and let's see what we can get first game I want to mention it's at it's on Sunday excuse me at 1 p.m. it's the Arizona Cardinals they go to Tennessee to take on the Titans in this one and let me bring up I have my notes on another screen so as I said Arizona goes to Tennessee Arizona to me uh, is getting three points here I would prefer that I have Arizona not to bury the lead here but I have Arizona winning this game about 27 to 24 in this one I know that might be surprising given the fact that Tennessee is become how can I put this it, the Tennessee's become some sort of juggernaut with Ryan Tannehill at quarterback you got AJ Brown uh, Julio Jones now but the, the the main draw is Derrick Henry He's gonna see what 25 26 carries you know a lot of these teams you look at them and you say well I don't know if, if Carolina is going to give Christian McCaffrey a full workload week one right he missed a couple games last season you know he's looked good but we're gonna kind of make sure he's okay he's not going to get a full-blown load here with Derrick Henry you don't have to worry about that this kid is a monster he's a beast and I'm not sure if any of you saw there was a video of him at practice and there was professional football players on their hands and knees as Henry ran through and he was shoving their heads down into the ground it was like some sort of drill imagine making it to the NFL and you're just some some stiff arm dummy for for Derrick Henry but again that's how much respect D Henry aka King Henry commands here so when you look at the game as I said, I have the final Arizona 31, 27, 24 in that range. So you have to mention Ryan Tannehill, Derrick Henry, as I have, A.J. Brown, Julio Jones. Uh, again, I see... Tennessee putting up 27, 28 points in this one. So there'll be plenty of, of points to go around, touchdowns, things along those lines. When you get to Arizona, who, as I said, fully expect them to score 30-plus points in this one, Kyler Murray is where you want to look, right? His ownership percentage in seasonal formats is 100%. DFS, that's a different story. I'm thinking 60%, 70% in this one. Kyler Murray, uh, A.J. Green, DeAndre Hopkins, Rondale Moore. Now, to me, Chase Edmonds and, and Rondale Moore are 
kind of like, I don't want to say X factors, but they're, they're, those are two kids we have to keep our eyes on. Rondale Moore has looked fantastic all spring, all summer. I firmly believe that Rondale will have some sort of Swiss Army knife role right off the beginning. Who's to say? I'll say it right now. Let's let, let's go indulge me here. Let, who's to say that Rondale Moore? can't take some sort of bubble screen or quick slant to the house, right? 75 or 80 yard type touchdown on Sunday. You know, you heard it here first and let's see what we get in terms of, of AJ green. Uh, not so much. I mean, he's a great play in seasonal formats. I think he's better left for your benches for right now, to, you know, knock off the rust and, and see what we get from there. But to be honest, as I said, Kyler Murray, Rondale Moore, you know, cause they're, they're going to put up 30 plus points. So where are these points going to come from? I'm telling you right now, I firmly believe that Chase Edmonds uh, has some sort of massive game week one. And wouldn't that be sweet? Wouldn't that be poetic after all this this, this nonsense has gone on, right? Uh, Kenyon Drake left and everybody's questioning Chase Edmonds. Will he? Won't he? Is he an RB1 for fantasy football? Is he an RB1 for regular real life, everyday football? I'm telling you now, make sure you get Chase Edmonds not only in your seasonal formats, but in, in DFS formats. As I said, let me bring up bottom of the barrel here real quick which you can find on team riser fall right now chase edmonds is fifty nine hundred dollars on fanduel forty six hundred dollars on DraftKings. Uh, they go to tennessee and tennessee is 27th overall against opposing running backs and again I, I think i would take arizona with the points to outright win in this one let's move on i want to go to kansas city next the cleveland browns head to kansas city where the over under in this one is 54 and a half points that is by far and away the highest over under of the schedule for week one here and i was at, i've asked questions all the time or folks ask me questions all the time and you're in your betting and your dfs and your seasonal process how do you kind of you know make the decision if it's between player a and player b how do you make that decision when you when you research your dfs stuff how do you make the decision which guys to stack or which guys to add in bottom of the barrel First and foremost, the foundation of what I do is looking at, it, at what Vegas has, the over-unders, the spreads here. And again, Vegas is all-knowing. They, they have it all figured out. They've had it all figured out. So I just implore you to maybe add that into your repertoire when you're, you're building lines for DFS or making decisions from seasonal formats here. So as I said, Cleveland goes to Kansas City. Over-under is 54.5 in this one. I have, it's no surprise, I have Kansas City winning, scoring about 40 two points in this one. I know it's wild and outlandish to say week one without any regular season football being played, but Cleveland will hold their own for a certain point here. Again, I have the final being 42 to, to 31 in a way in this one. So in turn, do you know that means you start your studs? Patrick Mahomes is very much in play. Tyreek Hill is much in play. Uh, Travis Kelsey. I mean, that goes without saying. I won't waste your time on, on the Kansas City Chiefs here because they're studs. Even Clyde edwards Hilaire. Seasonal formats, these guys are all starts. In DFS circles, uh, they're also plays for cash games. And if you want to get... Uh, if you want to kind of play devil's, if I want to play devil's advocate here, Patrick Mahomes, Tyree Kill, and Travis Kelsey, they do have value in a GPP, but I'm telling you, they're like free squares. There's going to be lots of other DFS, you know, uh, how can I put it, lines that have the same player. So these guys are free squares. They wash out, and it's able. you're able to cut your lineups in half, right? So if I have those three Chiefs and everybody else has those three Chiefs, then I have to differentiate my lineup between the rest, the other four or five guys here, which is why I write bottom of the barrel. So make sure you check it out. Shameless plug, and we'll move on. On the Cleveland Brown side of things, Baker Mayfield, obviously the Cleveland starting quarterback, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt. And to me, that's about it. Maybe a little bit of Austin Hooper. And I saw some talk the last few days about David Njoku being just, he was an absolute Kansas City Chief killer in the playoffs or in the regular season last year. They kind of, Hooper, or excuse me, Njoku really got over on Kansas City. Maybe it's because the Chiefs defense was looking at all the other moving parts and Njoku wasn't even really part of the 
the defensive plan. So just keep it in mind that uh, David Njoku is very much in play this weekend here. And one guy I want to talk about real quick, it's not Nick Chubb. We know what to expect from him. It's Kareem Hunt. And if I look at my bottom of the barrel notes here, Kareem Hunt is $6,000 on FanDuel, $5,500 on DraftKings, and an even 15 bucks on the Yahoo Fantasy Sports. So Kareem Hunt, I feel like, has a chance to really shine in this one. I believe, not sure if I mentioned it, but the Kansas City is 24th overall against opposing running backs. It's the old zig and zag thing. Everybody's going to be on Chubb. Everybody's going to be on, you know, Baker Mayfield in a way. Get Kareem Hunt in your seasonal lineups. Get Kareem Hunt in your DFS lineups. I'm telling you, at his price, as I said, $6,000 on FanDuel, $5,500 on DraftKings, and 17 bucks on Yahoo. Kareem Hunt is a guy who, who commands attention out of the backfield uh, catching passes. So I firmly believe Kareem Hunt finds the end zone week one. I also firmly believe he catches is four or five balls for 50, 60 yards. And we're talking about value. You know, everybody talks about ADP value in seasonal formats. And in DFS circles, it's all about value. So again, at his price on all three of these formats and sites, I think Kareem Hunt has a good chance of hitting for three, four times the value in this one. So as I said, I'm going to run with Kansas City uh, getting, uh, let me double check real quick. I don't want to give you faulty information. Yeah, Kansas City is is laying out six points. So Cleveland plus six. So I would prefer Kansas City minus the six points. Final in Kansas City, in my mind, is about 42 to, to 31 in that one. So you're looking at, what is that? Add it up. You're looking at like all, over 70 points. So the over under of 54 and a half will be reached by th the third quarter, maybe at the start of the second half in this one. Let's go down the list. I, I want to next go to New Orleans, right? Green Bay is playing New Orleans. I, I believe that game was moved to Jacksonville. Uh, every All the thoughts and prayers go out to everybody that's in New Orleans. They had a, a de another devastating hurricane. So our thoughts, my thoughts are with everybody in New Orleans, everybody that's in Florida, and everybody else kind of in the south there that's kind of helping New Orleans and Louisiana, you know, pick up the pieces and move on from there. So again, when, when certain things like this happen, you know, folks always say, well, you know, football is kind of like the, the, the last thing on the list that we want to get into. But in a way, football and even all sports, baseball and hockey is a way to, to, to be entertained, to kind of get your mind off what's going on around you for, for a few hours. If, if it's, you only get a few hours of, of respite, then, then so be it. So again, Green Bay goes to New Orleans, but the game is in Jacksonville. And that this one, the over-under is right at 50 points here. And again, I, I see this being a, another over. I have the final here. Here, Green Bay winning like 31 to 27. So again, the over will hit in this one. And what I'm most excited to see uh, in, in this game, and let me bring it up here in front of me, is how Aaron Rodgers, does he pick up where he left off? The MVP season, nothing has changed. Aaron Jones is, is a stud very much in play. Uh, Devontae Adams, arguably the best wide receiver in football. And one guy I want to talk about is, is Robert Tanyan. I've posted a couple videos, a couple screenshots of what I believe Robert Tanyan can do this season. And I firmly believe Robert Tanyan can score double-digit touchdowns again, even if it's just 10 that's still double-digit touchdowns. So uh, get Robert Tanyan in all your lineups, seasonal, uh, fantasy sports, dynasty, and even DFS uh, for this coming weekend. And A.J. Dillon, to me, is the X factor in this one. I know I, I mentioned that a few times, so we're just going to roll with it. The theme will be X factors here because, again, if we're playing – uh, DFS, you have to kind of be a little bit different than the than the crowd, right? Zig when we zag. So AJ Dillon to me is the the picture of that. He's the quintessential X factor in this one. Jamal Williams has split. He's in Detroit now. So I believe that AJ Dillon will step into that that J Will role seamlessly. Aaron Jones is still the workhorse. Aaron Jones is an overall RB one. So you look at that, and and you're going to get a lot of roster per, roster ship percentages from Aaron Jones, from Devontae Adams. And I don't see a, a case where you can go wrong with rostering A.J. Dillon in, in DFS formats and seasonal formats. Let's go to the New Orleans side of the ball real quick. Won't break it down a ton. Drew Brees is gone. He retired. Great dude. Wish him the best. Jameis Winston is now their quarterback one. So I'm going to have heavy shares of Jameis uh, this coming weekend in all, any and all formats here. Elvin Kamara, stud. We know what we're going to get. I, I know a lot of people that are saying with the bold takes, bold takes are huge right now. And it's just, it's been, it's hit, you know, 
unbelievably high proportions with the hot takes here. A lot of folks are saying, you know what, Elvin Kamara can hit and be the RB1 overall this coming season. I'm not uh, passing that up. I'm not discounting that. But look at Marcus Callaway and look at the combo of Callaway and Traquan Smith in this one. Callaway showed up and showed out in preseason by all purposes with, with Michael Thomas being on the shelf for like the first, what, six, seven weeks of the season. Callaway could step up and be that wide receiver one. So be careful there in DFS formats. He's going to be a, a sneaky kind of under the radar guy, but he won't be sneaking under the radar. Everybody is going to roster him. So again, I like to, to zig when others zag and give me Traquan Smith. And how about Juwan Johnson, New Orleans Saints wide receiver? He can be the X factor in this game for the Saints. Juwan Johnson is very cheap in DFS formats in front of me. He's about $4,500 on FanDuel. So I'm going to guess he's probably in the $3,400 range on DraftKings. So keep your eye on Juwan Johnson. Uh, stack him with, with Jameis Winston. And I think we're going to be good here. And I have the final, as I said in that one, about 31 to 27 so I'm taking the over big time and I'm also I'm going to take this might be odd but I'm going to take uh New Orleans with the points four points the Saints are getting four points so if it's 31 to 27 New Orleans gets four points it's kind of a wash so I, I would temper on that maybe a late field goal will put it you know in New Orleans you know wheelhouse here and I, I believe New Orleans loses but I still think they cover in a way if that makes any sense here so let's go to the last game that I have you know, for fantasy stuffed games here. And that's the, the Monday night football game. What a way to end our week when you have such a great Monday night football game. You can put all your, your single entry lineups in there. It's going to be fantastic. The Baltimore Ravens travel to Las Vegas to take on the Raiders. Now the over under in this one is 50, 50 50.5 points. So 50 and a half points in this one. And uh, if I had, if my notes are correct here, it looks like Baltimore is giving the Vegas Raiders four and a half points in this one. I have the final here, 31 to 21 in favor of Baltimore. So I'm going to take Baltimore minus four and a half. And in terms of DFS formats and, and seasonal fantasy f uh, formats, Lamar Jackson, I mean, that, that, that that's easy peasy. Um, Mark Andrews, their tight end, unbelievable play. Now, where we start to get into some, some, some gray area, some murky water, is what's Gus Edwards going to do? Does Tyson Williams kind of step in and get anything done? What about Hollywood Brown? What about Sammy Watkins? There's a lot of questions uh, to be answered on Monday night at the end of week one here. I'm telling you now, I would prefer to go with, with, with let's say, Marquise Brown, Tyson Williams and even Mark Andrews is my my triple headed stack in DFS formats. It's wild, it's crazy. Why would you stack those guys and, and not add Lamar Jackson? If you got the money, grab Lamar Jackson. If not, it's okay to have a couple guys from the same offense without the the head honcho, the ringleader in in Lamar Jackson. And let's focus on the the Las Vegas Raiders side for a moment. Derek Carr, uh, he looks good. Nothing has changed. Everybody just sweeps. Uh, Derek Carr under the rug. His arm strength is still fantastic. We, I, we've seen a, a lot of clips and plays uh, of Derek rolling out on the run, putting the ball on a dime. Boom, right in the breadbasket or right in the chest between the numbers here. So Derek Carr uh, very much in play for me here. What everybody's talking about is how the, the running back touches and, and carries are going to kind of work out here. Josh Jacobs is their RB1. I don't think that changes. But now you have Ken, Kenyon Drake to add a different dynamic to the Vegas Raiders here. He might catch, obviously he, he will catch more passes than Josh Jacobs, but in turn, Josh Jacobs will get all the carries. Is he their goal line back? Absolutely. Will they work in Kenyon Drake inside the goal line? Sure. Will they have Kenyon Drake in on third and long? Absolutely. So it's up to you to kind of decide what way you want to go here. And I don't think it's crazy to to in our DFS lines this weekend and surely on the Monday night single game, why can't we roster both Josh Jacobs and Kenyon Drake? I don't think it's a bad move. It's one of those decisions that can help set your lineup apart from the crowd here, right? Everybody knows you can stack both of them. A lot large portion of people will do that, but I know a lot of casual DFS fans and folks, they kind of uh, stray away from that. They don't want too much exposure to one team. Well, this just in on a single game that's that has that's not even 
possible. It's okay to have massive, you know, ownership percentages of one team or a collection of guys. You got one game to work with. So I'm telling you now, I'm cool with stacking both Josh Jacobs and Kenyon Drake. Two other people in in passing here, Brian Edwards. Everybody thinks he's going to be the the alpha wide receiver one in Vegas. I'm not. I'm not for it. I'm not against it. We'll have to see how it breaks down here. I think Darren Waller goes without saying. Massive play. Unbelievably high upside in this one. Hunter Renfro and even Henry Ruggs the third. We'll see how it goes. So week one of the NFL season is a good gauge. Keep your eye on a lot of these these moving parts, these positional battles, and we'll see what we get headed into week two. So for now, I'm going to settle with, as I said, Baltimore minus four and a half points. The over-under in that one I said is like 50 and a half points. I think it hits. It'll go over by two, three points max in this one. So be careful with how much money you're spending on the over-unders and the betting and DFS. Bet responsibly and only, you know, spend what, what, what you have. Don't go above and beyond. Want everybody to play, you know, safe and responsibly. So before I get out of here, just want to say thank you for th- this week so far has been unbelievably fantastic with the content and the interactions. And you can tell I'm excited. I know you're excited. And before I split... Make sure you double back and you go to Team Riser Fall. Use promo code NFL50. You'll get half off your first month of premium service. So until we meet again, I'm Chris Robin, and just enjoy week one. It's going to be fantastic. I'll see you later. Bye.